There was one particular story I want to relate to you that does not suggest any protocol. In fact, I'm going to discourage you from following this protocol. Please do not try the compound that I'm about to describe. One of the favorite things that we like to do in that lab was to find rare compounds and test them. And at the time I was reading about thermogenesis and I learned about a compound that was actually discovered in the armory factories of World War II. And it was discovered because women in particular who were working in these factories would take a a brush and dip it in a compound uh, or a paint rather, and they would then paint the numbers with a stencil onto things like bombs and and, uh, ammunition of various kinds. And they were losing weight like crazy. It turns out that occasionally they'd lick the brush and then they would go back just to get a, sh- a sharper point on the brush and then they would uh, paint onto these uh, various you know, bullets and, uh, and missiles and so forth, bombs and so forth. And they started shedding all their body fat. And many of them lost, uh, excuse me, lost a lot of weight, a significant portion of their weight without changing anything else that they were doing, what they were eating, etc. Turned out that that compound is something called dinitrophenol, DNP. And over the years, dinitrophenol, DMP, has gained popularity in some niche cultures, mainly bodybuilders, athletes, even in the kind of modeling industry. It is a absolutely terrible compound for anyone to use because it's highly fatal if your body temperature goes too high. Hyperthermia will kill you. And indeed, many people have died using dinitrophenol as a weight loss drug or attempting to use it as a weight loss drug. But dinitrophenol really illustrates a principle, which is that your your metabolism includes things like thyroid hormone and growth hormone, etc. But your body temperature and the way you utilize energy is controlled by your nervous system. And the way dinitrophenol works is by changing the neurons and the way that the neurons that connect to fat change the way fat burns up. So we are not going to suggest, I am not suggesting that you use dinitrophenol. However, there are other things that you can do that can change the relationship between these neurons and the fat of your body in ways that can powerfully accelerate fat loss. And I don't know why we don't hear about these things more, but probably because most of what you see out there on the internet focuses more on what you could eat and should eat or shouldn't eat. It concentrates on exercise regimens, which we will also talk about. But the burn factor, your thermogenic environment, is one of the, if not the most important factors in this business of fat loss. And since I'm a neuroscientist, that's what we're going to talk about. So let's talk about fat utilization. Let's talk about how fat is converted into energy, which is sometimes also called fat burning. What I'd like you to know is that this is a two-part process, okay? In reality, there are many biochemical steps. And if you log onto the internet or you open up a textbook and you want to learn about fat utilization, you're going to see a lot of chemistry. And I'm happy to go deep into that chemistry if you like, but I think most of you are probably interested in what are the leverage points? Where can you exert control over this process in ways that benefit you? So I'm going to focus mainly on those, okay? This is not to upset the aficionados and I will put in some nomenclature, but here we go. There's two parts to this process. One is fat mobilization and the second is fat oxidation or utilization, okay? So the first thing that has to happen for body fat to get burned up or used and reduced is that it has to get mobilized. And that's a process called lipolysis. But I actually don't care if you know the name lipolysis. You just have to move that fat out of the position that it's in. You have to get it out of the fat cells. All right. Fat cells can be visceral around our viscera, our organs, or they can be subcutaneous under our skin. Most people are thinking about subcutaneous fat when they think about fat. So here's the deal. And if you want more detail, great. I'll touch on that in a bit. But basically stored fat has two parts that are relevant here. It's got the fatty acid part, and that's the part that your body can use. 
and that's attached to something called glycerol and they're linked by a backbone. So already probably too much chemistry for both of you. But what you want is you want to break the backbone. So if you just can remember to mobilize fat, you got to break the backbone between glycerol and these fatty acids, okay? That's accomplished by an enzyme called lipase. But you can forget all that if you want. Remember, we're just trying to mobilize fat. So the first step is to get those fatty acids moving around in the bloodstream, to get them out of those fat cells. And then they can travel and be used for energy. And that second part, remember, first part is mobilization. The second part is oxidation, is then those fatty acids, those are potential fuel. They're just potential fuel, but you haven't burned the fat yet. You've just moved it out of your fat cells. They're going to go into cells that can use them for energy. And once they are inside those cells, they're still not burned up. You need to oxidize them. You think oxidation is the burn up part. They need to be moved into the mitochondria and then they can be converted into ATP, into energy. So just to really zoom out again to make sure I don't lose anybody, you got to mobilize the fat, then you have to oxidize the fat. You have to, in other words, you have to mobilize it, then you actually have to convert it into energy. If you just mobilize it and you don't convert it into energy, you don't oxidize it, it can be returned to body fat. And many of the things that the nervous system can do is to increase the mobilization of fat, but also the oxidation of fat. Okay, so you have two opportunities to burn more fat. And both of those opportunities are governed by your nervous system, by neurons that literally send little wires that we call axons into fat and release chemicals that provide a stimulus for more of that fat to be mobilized and then later for more of that fat to be burned up. Okay, so we could go really deep on this but I'm not gonna go much deeper than that because this isn't a biochemistry of fatty acid metabolism lecture. This is about how to burn fat using your nervous system. But remember, there's a mobilization step and then there's an oxidation step. I think any one of you, all of you should be able to internalize that. Mobilize, then oxidize, okay? Mobilize, then oxidize. So what are these neurons that connect to fat doing? What are they releasing exactly? How do they actually increase fat mobilization and how do they increase fat oxidation, burning of fat? Well, there are a couple of things that they release that encourage that process. And the main one that you need to know about is epinephrine or adrenaline. The conversion of these fatty acids into ATP in the mitochondria of cells is favored by adrenaline. Okay, and adrenaline is released from two sources. Adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands, which sit atop our kidneys in our lower back. And it's also released from the so-called sympathetic nervous system, although that name is a bit of a misnomer because it has nothing to do with sympathy, it has to do with stimulating alertness and promoting action of the body. There's a big mistake in the literature that is finally being corrected among those who know. The mistake in the literature is that the adrenal glands and the release of adrenaline is what stimulates fat loss and fat oxidation. In fact, it was thought for a long time that adrenaline swimming around in your body of when you're fasted, because fasting can increase adrenaline, or when you're engaging in intense exercise or when you're stressed is going to promote fat oxidation. That's actually not the case. The adrenaline that stimulates fat oxidation, the burning of fat, is coming from neurons that actually connect to the fat, not hormones like adrenaline that are swimming around in your system. It's a local process. And this is very important because it means that what you do, the specific patterns of movements and the specific environment you create that can stimulate these particular neurons to activate fat, meaning to release fat, to mobilize it, and then to burn it, is going to be a powerful lever that you can use in order to increase fat loss. So what have we said so far? We've said that you gotta mobilize, you gotta burn fat, and that your nervous system is in control of that process. It's not just about calorie deficit. 